Welcome to Sergeant Rock PT. I'm First Lieutenant Tyler Hughes and I'm going to be walking you through a series of exercises that are specifically designed to improve your performance on the Air Force push-up and Air Force sit-up. This PT video was developed to assist Air Force members and teams in their efforts to pass and achieve higher scores on the new Air Force PT test. The techniques demonstrated in this video were developed through a collaborative effort between U.S. Air Force and civilian fitness experts. This was done to both accommodate subtle changes in the Air Force PT program over the past several years and through the process of trial and error as to what works best in a large PT formation within a minimal time. The program focuses on two very important concepts for building the muscular strength required to perform well on the Air Force PT test, total muscle failure and perfect muscle memory. If performed correctly, these techniques will definitely improve your performance on the Air Force push-up and Air Force sit-up. You must perform each repetition perfectly to total muscle failure in order to achieve optimal results. If you do not put forward maximum effort and simply go through the motions during this workout, your results will be minimal. In other words, we can't coach try. The regular Air Force push-up. Airmen will begin in the starting position with arms fully extended and the body in a straight line from head to heel. The airman will raise his or her head so he or she is looking forward, which will aid in keeping the airman's back in perfect posture. From the starting position, the airman will lower the body to the ground until the airman's chin touches the ground, while keeping the chest and abdominal area off the ground and pushing back up to the starting position. The body must remain rigid during every repetition. The airman will continue to perform perfect push-ups through the full range of motion until reaching total muscle failure. Immediately upon reaching total muscle failure, the airman will transition to his or her knees and continue to perform perfect push-ups until total muscle failure is reached again. Upon reaching total muscle failure on their knees, the airman will sit back on his or her knees and rest for about 5 to 8 seconds, then begin with a second set of regular Air Force push-ups fully extended. Total muscle failure usually happens fairly rapidly now, and once again when the airman reaches total muscle failure fully extended, he or she will transition to his or her knees and continue to perform perfect push-ups until total muscle failure. Once total muscle failure is reached, the exercise is concluded. At no time should the airman be allowed to do incorrect push-ups as these only reinforce negative muscle memory, which then has to be overcome biomechanically before more positive or perfect muscle memory can be imprinted on the brain and nerve fibers of the body. When conducting PT, perform ex exercises at a much quicker pace. Now we transition to the first abdominal exercise. Remember that the abdominals must be accomplished in this specific order. Reverse crunch with partner. One airman lies on the ground and assumes the position of a 90 degree bend at the knees and a 90 degree bend at the hips, making sure not to cross his or her feet. The airman's partner stands at the head of the first airman with feet on either side of the first airman's head facing the feet of the first airman. The airman on the ground reaches over their head and grabs the ankles of his or her partner for stability. During all the abdominal exercises, it is important for airmen to keep their necks relaxed and this is facilitated by identifying a spot on the ceiling or in the sky to focus on while performing the specific exercises. While maintaining the 90 degree bend at the hips and knees, the airman will engage his or her lower abdominal muscles to lift their hips just off the floor, pulling themselves up onto their shoulder blades. This is the working portion of the exercise, and each repetition should last from 2 to 4 seconds. The resting portion is accomplished with the airman pulling their legs up higher into the crunch at the top of the movement, rolling back towards their standing partner. Repetition should go until total muscle failure. Once total muscle failure is achieved, it is time to transition to the second push-up exercise. The wide grip push-up. The airman will begin in the starting position with arms fully extended and the body in a straight line from head to heel. The airman's hands should be as far apart as possible allowing for full repetitions. The airman will raise his or her head so he or she is looking forward which will aid in keeping the airman's back in perfect posture. From the starting position, the airman will lower the body to the ground until the airman's chin touches the ground 
while keeping the chest and abdominal area off the ground and pushing back up to the starting position. The body must remain rigid during every repetition. The airman will continue to perform perfect push-ups through the full range of motion until reaching total muscle failure. Immediately upon reaching total muscle failure, the airman will transition to his or her knees and continue to perform perfect push-ups until total muscle failure is reached. Upon reaching total muscle failure on their knees, the airman will sit back on his or her knees and rest for about five to eight seconds. Then begin with a second set of wide grip push-ups fully extended on their feet. Total muscle failure usually happens fairly rapidly now and once again when the airman reaches total muscle failure fully extended, he or she will transition to his or her knees and continue to perform perfect push-ups until total muscle failure. This is how wide grip push-ups should be executed at full speed. Upon reaching total muscle failure, the exercise is concluded, and it is time to transition to the second abdominal exercise. The oblique crunch. The airman must lie on the ground and maintain the 90 degree bend at the knees and hips, making sure not to cross his or her feet. The airman must cup their head with one hand and extend the opposite arm alongside the hip. The airmen must crunch up while slowly twisting, trying to take their shoulder to opposite knee while reaching with the other hand, now up off the ground towards their ankle on the same side as the hand that was on the ground. This should facilitate getting both shoulder blades off the ground in the fully contracted position. The airmen should suck in the abdominal muscles at the top of the contraction and try to press their back down into the ground. Remember to relax the neck by looking at a spot on the ceiling or in the sky, especially since the hand behind the neck will commonly pull on the neck, which the airman should avoid. Airmen should hold the contraction for two to four seconds, which is the working portion of the exercise, and slowly lower the upper torso back to the ground in the resting position. The location of perceived effort should be below the pectoral muscle and upper abdominal area of the crunched side. The airman should forcefully breathe out while contracting the abdominals at the top of the contraction and inhale during the resting position. These should be performed to total muscle failure and then you will move on to the next push-up. Diamond push-ups. The airman will begin in the starting position with arms fully extended and the body in a straight line from head to heel. The airman's hands should be as close together as possible, allowing for full repetitions, while forming a diamond with opposite forefingers and thumbs touching directly below the middle of the chest. The airman will raise his or her head so he or she is looking forward, which will aid in keeping the airman's back in perfect posture. From the starting position, the airman will lower the body to the ground until the airman's chin touches the ground before pushing back up to the starting position. The chest will likely touch the hands at the bottom of the push-up before the airman's chin touches the ground. The body must remain rigid during every repetition. The airman will continue to perform perfect push-ups through the full range of motion until reaching total muscle failure. Immediately upon reaching total muscle failure, the airman will transition to his or her knees and continue to perform perfect push-ups until total muscle failure is reached. Upon reaching total muscle failure on their knees, the airman will sit back on his or her knees and rest for about five to eight seconds. Then begin with a second set of diamond push-ups fully extended. Total muscle failure usually occurs fairly rapidly now and once again when the airman reaches total muscle failure fully extended, he or she will transition to his or her knees and continue to perform perfect diamond push-ups until total muscle failure. For instructional purposes only, the diamond push-up is being demonstrated slowly. When conducted at full speed, the exercise will look like this. Upon reaching total muscle failure on the knees, for a second time, the exercise is concluded. And it is time to transition to the third abdominal exercise. <laughs> 